is chaired by uh, Mr. Umesh Rathod. He will explain the innovation and technology. So I am requesting Mrs. Manisha Jangle, Madam, to Mr. Umesh Rathod, founder of Lean Campus Startup. Thank you, sir.
Thank you for that brief introduction, ma'am. I would like to take the opportunity to first of all thank uh, Shubhda ma'am uh, and uh, Dr. Uh, Kamdeep Sandhikar sir for giving me this opportunity to be part of this uh, National Seminar on Emerging Trends in Entrepreneurship Research 2021, which is also co-organized by Center of Invention, Innovation and Innovation, uh, of, which is a part of Karambir Power of Patil Uh Let me start by giving uh, you know, thanks to the previous speaker, Santosh Kalpuri sir, for uh, giving the brief insights into how uh, you know the journey of startup has been with Sign IIT and uh, uh, you know how it has been tuning up the ecosystem uh, you know in India and uh, you know a lot of people call Sign IIT as a power valley and uh, today I'll be speaking about uh, how innovation and technology entrepreneurship uh, is you know uh, really important for a country like us. Uh, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll try to take you through various insights into uh, how this concept of innovation and technology entrepreneurship started out. So I'll go a little bit step further to what uh, Santosh uh, sir has already shared and give you more brief insights as to before making a Power Valley in India, there was another you know ecosystem which was already burning up in uh, early you know uh, eight in late uh, 1800 uh, you know, uh, uh, century or 18th century we can say we started off with this concept and uh, when they started off with this concept they asked this question as to where uh, should we be, what should we be and how should we be. So this is also one of the insights I am sharing with the students at large who are listening to this session. It's uh, a percept from my upcoming book where I talk about the strategies for startups and uh, uh, it is untitled as of now, but uh, you know, the people who ventured out into creating entrepreneurship and technology, you know, culmination of these two, uh, these were the people who started with these questions. And these were stated by our Arthashastra Guru, Kautalya, uh, you know, none other than Chanakya, uh, uh, way back in 300, you know, uh, BCE. And, uh, I'll start off with this uh, shloka which says Asatoma Satgamaya Tamsoma Jyotirgamaya Pratyurma Pratangamaya Om Shanti 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 That means when you are in darkness to go into the light you have to take certain initiatives and uh, you know then only any country can be progressive then only any country can be a developed country and uh, we were a developed country earlier but after so many, you know, uh, things which happened on our, uh, you know, soil, and a uh, lot of things which have uh, changed the, the demography, the culture over here, we are slowly, uh, gradually getting back to becoming, you know, world superpower and becoming the top three economies by 2030, 2035. So obviously, the aim you are all aware of, touching the dollar ten trillion economy, is uh, on the. The, uh, you know, charts by the government of India, and definitely with uh, the kind of uh, sessions which we are happening right now, the kind of learnings which have happened throughout the pandemic, we are definitely going to achieve that. So let's let's understand about this step uh, earlier, which I mentioned uh, before. Power Valley, which has been created in India, we have something. You know, we have read about something called the Silicon Valley in the West, and. Uh, if you look at this picture, you know, it was uh, it was here that uh, the technological entrepreneurship took shape. And when I say that uh, the technological entrepreneurship took place, that means the whole Silicon Valley is based on the concept of research. You know, uh, before there were big companies, which I'll be sharing in the uh, coming slides, there were research labs which were 
you know, uh, established on this land. And uh, there were Bell Laboratories, uh, you know, and there were semiconductor laboratories. Uh, there was a lot of research going on in that space. And then through the mentor and mentee relationship, that is the professors, the educational or the academias which were researching, uh, you know, in, in the space over there, uh, they slowly, gradually, uh, you know, converted those, uh, you know, inventions into technological devices. And that's how they came up with entrepreneurial ideas. They reached out to our markets and created new ones, disrupted the markets and, you know, established themselves. So this journey was start, you know, started nearly 100 years back. And today we can see at what level it has reached. Uh, and that is uh, really important for us to know as to how we can create that ecosystem where technology and entrepreneurship and, you know, obviously innovation uh, go hand in hand. So when we talk about Silicon Valley, there are top reasons why Silicon Valley was a success. One, it had an electronic warfare. Every lab was trying to come up with something new. Every lab was trying to, you know, compete with each other and try to make their, you know, kind of a monopoly. Uh, they were working towards maths and science propagation. The STEM learning model was created a long time back in the West, which slowly, gradually we are adopting over here. Then the climate, uh, you know, was conducive for the ecosystem to develop. Uh, there was a California mentality where they were inviting immigrations, they were inviting new people, new ideas across the globe and, you know, experimenting with that. At the same time, they were inventing new business models, which were not thought of earlier, right? And we can see those today, like, uh, you know, we have uh, so many uh, different aggregator models which are available uh, in the ecosystem. Sharing of culture, coming up with you know, understanding different cultures, different ideas, and uh, helping to shape up the, the ecosystem. Then, boom and bust at the same time, where there are a lot of things which were working right direction. There was certain things which were not going uh, in the conducive way. So, obviously, there was a lot of things they were starting and stopping. So, a lot of businesses working great, but at the same time, few things which were not working. Then, most importantly, reinvesting the wealth which was created in research and development. And uh, lastly, minimal government interference, which was the, uh, what we can say, the foundation of the Silicon Valley, where there were people from, you can see in the picture over here, there were universities, there were startups, there were large enterprises, there were research organizations, and all these three were working as an innovation engine to own up the whole ecosystem to drive, uh, you know, the entrepreneurship the technological invention. So you can see there was Stanford, University of California, uh, and various other universities which were, you know, developing slowly and gradually, uh, starting with Stanford, obviously. And then you have large enterprises which took shape. There was HP, there was Intel, there was Cisco, Oracle, Google, and whatnot, which came into existence. There were uh, international research organizations, including NASA, who, who, you know, established themselves in that. And then the startups and SMEs, which, uh, you know, slowly, gradually started working to support this ecosystem by, you know, having connections with local universities, research institutes, large firms, and that helped to increase the culture of startups in Silicon Valley. So uh, we are taking learnings from this. We are taking learnings from this as to create that kind of an ecosystem over here. Uh, and uh, we can say that by 2030, 2035, looking at the kind of investments made in the government in this space, we are going to see a big shift in the way things work over here. So when we talk about uh, Silicon Valley or you know uh, any technological advancements which have happened, uh, which has you know, been uh, creating a revolution, so uh, it has to do something with the industrial revolution. Uh, in, 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 a, in a nutshell, and when we look at this, uh, the first cycle of industrial revolution was about the steam engine. And when the steam engine came into existence, it gave boom to the textile industry, to the cotton industry, because the transport was feasible. Then the steam engine, which was created, was put into a railway, you know, uh, as, as a railway system, and then it helped in 
creating a steel industry and increase of steel usage across the uh, demographics. Then came the third cycle, which was about electricity. And when we talk about electricity, uh, you know, the steam engine was converted into electricity. Way of uh, you know commuting was created, which created into a mass consumption also. That means electricity was available now at homes, and it gave boost to the chemical industry because now that electricity has to be also stored somewhere. Uh, whenever you know it is required, so because of that, when we had the electrical you know uh, electricity invention. Then came the next revolution of the vehicle, so the car, the bullet, and this was the fourth cycle, which gave boost to the petrochemical industry. And then the fifth cycle was all about going on. Uh, you know, there is a boom in the IT sector even today. It's all about communication. And the fifth, the the next very cycle that is, we are looking at, and all will agree to this. It's all about health. You know, and um, uh, everyone is focusing on health of this wealth concept because it's all about biotech, health, and DNA. So the kind of impact which has happened because of all the revolution on the humanity as to when we sit on the computers and we get lethargic and a uh, lot of uh, problem pertaining to eyesight or a lot of problems pertaining to backaches and all the things which we are dealing with in today's circumstances. The next uh, revolution is all going to be about health. So you will see any industry, any startup which is coming up with uh, you know noble cause in this space is uh, surely going to succeed in the future. So when we talk about these inventions <clears throat> and the technology or the on the brain, also need to look at this innovation backwards, which clearly defines how you know the innovation. Practice helps to create uh, or make uh, or break the market. So when you look at the technology, the technology is existing, and you are pitching to the existing market. It's an incredible innovation. Uh, that means an incre incremental innovation. That means you have created a mobile phone. There is already a 4G technology available. So you are going to increment that process by coming up with something new in that. When you it is an architectural invention because in that you are focusing on you know making some changes in the in the uh, product. Then when you look at you and a new for example space industry, everyone wants to you know colonize Mars and a lot of students over here might have already read books about Elon Musk and what he is trying to do with SpaceX. Technical invention is something where you are talking about a new market which is untapped and new technology which is which is not heard of. For example, you know how we are going to live on Mars if we are going to colonize it. We'll be, be wearing some kind of suits. Uh, how the housing will look like? What kind of water you know filtration will be there? How the houses will look over there? What kind of roads will be there? So it's a radical innovation which. It is completely new. We have to start from, uh, you know, uh, in a new way. Then comes the uh, market, uh, uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's for the existing market and new technology. It is disruptive innovation, which uh, we can you know understand by this simple you know uh, chart over here. So when we look at Netflix, it's a disrupted the television you know market, and it has really nice the way we look at things uh, or the way. We visualize television. Then there is incremental invention that is Coca-Cola. Then there is product innovation, which is a smartwatch. Toyota is a process invention where they work on just-in-time delivering the whole, what we can say, the vehicle when it is just required at a certain, you know, uh, delivery. So when you order the Toyota, it gets into manufacturing and then. Or assembly, and then it gets into uh, you know, delivery mode. Modular innovation could be MacBook improving the performances. Memory foam in the mattresses in the bed which you sleep is an architectural innovation. It's applying existing technology somewhere else. There is a bridge builder challenge, which is an open innovation, collaborative effort to improve product and processes, which is happening. 
and this model is working in hackathons across the uh, globe. In-house innovation, or we can say close innovation, yeah, in-house effort to improve products and processes, which China has definitely mastered over the years. And we can see industries uh, in small houses and SMEs created in small houses over there, which slowly, gradually, we are going to see happening in India as well. <clears throat> so uh, when we look at innovation, uh, you know, why it is important that technology uh, innovation takes place uh, because it at the same time is directly proportional to the entrepreneurial ventures which is being created as it's clearly visible through this graph over So when innovation happens, you know, a te new technology is created, a new business model is created and which leads to the growth over the years, uh, you know, from 1450s till today, uh, the way the industrial revolution which happened, the second industrial revolution, and now we are talking about industry 4.0 and 2.0, how the increment in the global GDP per capita has happened. And uh, when we look at this graph, we can understand that every innovation, innovative technology, innovative business model which comes into existence, it helps us to actually come up with new models of venture creation. It gives opportunity for people to get into entrepreneurship and you know, uh, try to create uh, value for all the people at large. Now, when we talk about the challenges faced in this invention or research, uh, and the way the you know the papers are being published in the domain, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the research domain, we need to understand what are the three C's when we look at it. The first one is the contribution. You know, uh, what kind of contribution is that of a research? What are the new findings? Uh, is, what are the novel ideas which you are sharing with the people at large? Is it generalized? Uh, is it a new model? Is it a new method? We need to be clear as to what our research is going to contribute in the research domain. And, uh, you know, most of the papers which are being published in this area, uh, you know, uh, in the, in the, in the research domain get uh, rejected because they are not fulfilling the contribution grounds. Maybe they are not working on some new model, maybe they are not having some new method, or it's not something uh, kind of a novel research. So uh, here in the ecosystem over here in India, when we talk about research, we need to focus on this contribution aspects as to what is that we are going to contribute for research and how we can come up with new, new models of research. Then the next is the correctness of our research, whether we have got the proper data. You know, the major problems faced by researcher is collating or collecting the data. And the correctness of the research is really important with respect to identification of the strategy also. So what is the method which you're going to use in the research? What kind of analysis you're going to use? to study whatever you have researched and what kind of outcomes you are going to research. The next aspect is about the exposition, uh, you know, whether it is, uh, you know, giving clarity pertaining to your research. Uh, we need to understand as to, you know, when we talk about the scholars who publish in top journals, what are the challenges uh, and what are the things which are required by them to publish in top Students who are listening to this session might be wondering I'm, whether I'm going to pursue research or not. Uh, you know, you are researching all the time. When you Google something on net, you're researching. You are trying to identify, identify something. And uh, when we talk about uh, publishing in top journals, you know, when you um, research which is going to have a lot of impact, uh, then we can say you need three things. That means you need data, uh, you need uh, experimentation, and guidance uh, that there should be accessibility for the tools which uh, could be used in your research to experiment with the data. Then uh, there is something called a Chinese model. Uh, most of the you know top researchers today are uh, based out of in India and China. I'm like they're going to surpass the number of publications uh, compared to the West. And then comes the training that is focus on the behavioral methods as to what kind of training is required 
to actually you know uh, support our research then consortium across indian schools that means there should be a collaborative effort i am iit one iit b iit c there should be a conducive environment where everyone comes together and support the causes there should be an advisory board of few scholars who can actually you know uh, help in training and taking things forward and then last but not the least uh, most important aspect is mentoring when we talk about mentoring it is seeking out uh, scholars who have already published in top journals here and uh, uh, it should have uh, you know support from them so when you are not published in top journals you obviously have to find a mentor who has published in the top journals and uh, whether you can collect some novel data uh, experiment with the you know uh, going in the field uh, build company relationships uh, uh, you know your mentors can definitely guide you and then uh, when we look at mentoring this is how the western you know world that is the european nations or the chinese have excelled in in uh, coming up with this kind of a model and i guess it can as discussed by uh, professor satosh also is that it could be replicated in the context so uh, slowly gradually develop and you can be part of that value chain now uh, i will give an example of how the search in innovation or technology leads to entrepreneurship is uh, through a case study of hyperloop as you can see the hyperloop is uh, a concept where uh, you have to travel at the speed of 200 km per hour in a capsule through a you know a tunnel and uh, already there is a project being worked between mumbai pune as you might be aware of but how this idea came into existence how this technological invention came into existence and how the hyperloop which is now a virgin collaborated virgin hyperloop concept which is going to take shape in the near future it was through a research paper there was a research paper which was published a couple of years ago and taking motivation from that uh, you know uh, design uh, this kind of a concept was recreated by elon musk and then it was uh, the idea which was you know brought into existence so when we talk about in the research space pertaining to materials or metallurgy pertaining to physics pertaining to uh, social sciences but it cannot be work in a you know right sense until unless you don't focus on you know bringing those aspects into implementation so most of the times what happens is the research is focused only in you know some research labs and uh, i guess that is where a lot of things went wrong in our uh, you know ecosystem uh, way back in uh, you know 1700s or 1600s that lot of people tried to kept the data the information to themselves and they were not easily giving it out so the open source models which are for so to actually you know work in a in a better way and i guess that needs to be done over here as well that open source platform should be available where people from various demographies can access to that data and they can create a new inventions so hyperloop is one such example which is from the research uh, you know technological product it was just a thought Uh, researched about and then now it has become the reality and there are various other examples in that domain where such kind of a model could be you know, examined or could be uh, figured out now when we talk about these three aspects of the ite we need to look at what is all these three things so let's start with innovation it is translating an idea or invention in a good or service that creates value or for which the customers will pay so innovation is when you are bringing to physicality you know it's not just a thought it becomes a reality and then technology is making modification usage and knowledge of tools machines techniques to you know uh, perform a specific function so you have a product you have an invention now you are going to implement it in some or the other way like the 4g technology in telephones like 4g is a fourth generation tools and all the equipments which are required in 4g are to be in sync 
for working with the mobile phone or the technology in that space. All the new devices have to be created for running the system in that way. At the same time, the next part is disruptive technology. So disruptive technology is an innovation which helps in creating new market and new value as discussed earlier. Netflix, which created a new market for the way we view you know, television or the way we uh, have to view the, the web series. Uh, and uh, it has created and garnered so much of attention across the world that people have forgotten to watch TV now. And here they can select what they really want to see and you know, uh, they can give, uh, they can watch it at whenever they want, 24-7, uh, five days. It's unlike TV, the way it has been disrupted. And this word disruption, I mean, like started off uh, by the disruption of uh, workmen, then uh, cameras, which we have seen like when iPod came into existence. So disruptive technology is something which can happen in various domains. And uh, there requires a lot of research, uh, you know, and uh, support from the ecosystem to come up with disruptive ideas. And when disruptive innovation happens, as to with biotech, I can say that we are doing incredibly well. We are kind of at the height of uh, pandemic circumstances and the kind of vaccines which we have created and supported global economies. Then comes entrepreneurship, the capacity and willingness to develop openings and manage businesses, uh, creating venture along with the risk involved and, uh, in order to make profit. And that's what the role of entrepreneurship comes in over here. So you have an innovation, you, you know, created a technology around it. Maybe you created a disruptive technology which no one has thought of uh, as to what I explained when you, you know, start criminalizing mass. There will be various disruptive technologies in that space which will be required, which we have not even heard of. And then when we start making money out of it, you know, like Elon Musk is the richest uh, entrepreneur today, we making uh, entrepreneurship or creating ventures through the technological inventions in the past. So this is the relationship between innovation and innovation leads to technology creation and technology creates opportunity for the entrepreneurship. Now, when we look at uh, so much of innovation happening, still we have a lot of corporates which, you know, companies which fail. And uh, the reason being uh, the model which they are working on becomes absolute. And, you know, it's a it's a work of every institution, be it small or large, that they have an R&D institution to look further. You know, a great example over here is of Nokia, which did not push to go on to open source platform and which led to other businesses who opted the Android platform were a big hit in the market. So it is really important for us to understand even if large companies exist, that it is not important that they will be the market leaders forever. And for India and China, we can say that there has always been a, you know, a, 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 what we can say a fight. That's what becomes a market leader in China becomes a market leader over here in India. Xiaomi became the market leader and we had Xiaomi phones in India. Now, as soon as Samsung has again regained the Chinese market, we are seeing the, you know, uprise uh, in the uh, Samsung market share. And now, so we, I guess it has become the market leader over here as well. So, you need to understand how the market, uh, you know, volatility is and try to understand what is that as an entrepreneur which you can, you know, uh, visualize and how you can try to break the market. So, well, disruptive technologies where we are working on, the you know, global institutions are working on, is mobile internet, like you might have heard about the satellite internet idea of Elon Musk. So it can be disruptive, it can disrupt your mobile internet. You don't need towers. As you can see, there were towers being disrupted in pandemic times in UK. Also in India, we have seen so many things happen. Next generation, genomics is something which people are working on automation of knowledge work that is bringing AI, energy storage, IOTs, 3D printing, which is quite efficient when you want to replicate something, cloud technology, advanced materials, advanced robotics, advanced oil and gas exploration and recovery, autonomous and rear autonomous vehicles and renewable energy. So these are the areas, uh, apart from the health and DNA, uh, you know, uh, which uh, we are already seeing in the market. These are the areas where you can also strive to work towards. Then the 12 disruptive technologies and their economic impact, which you can see through this slide is, when we talk about mobile internet, 
Call of 1.7 trillion GDP was in to internet and 25 trillion dollars, you know, employment uh, cost was, uh, you know, generated. The transaction of worker employment cost was created. Automation of knowledge created 9 trillion dollars and then internet of things around 36 trillion dollars. And similarly, you can see various numbers adjacent to this, you know, technological developments like uh, energy storage, which created two dollars and uh, 3D printing. So every new technological advancement has brought a lot of economic growth. And that is really important that we focus on when we are moving ahead towards building new technologies. There are few technologies which we have not mastered on. We can say that we, uh, you know, were late in understanding the importance. But for example, maglev, you know, uh, uh, trains or, you know, which we are trying to procure from Japan. And we have purchased kind of a model where we are going to create one. And then learning from that, we are going to replicate that for different parts of the world. So that is the way we uh, we don't try to work towards new technologies, which we have not mastered on. Uh, and that is one uh, kind of uh, uh, way of looking at it. Like if you have not started off, like for Bartek, we had a good kickstart. We have so many companies doing well in that space. But at the same time, if you look at which are not yet targeted, so we can always learn from them and try to master it. Like Toyota was uh, started because of uh, the owner of Toyota company once traveled to US and he brought a Ford vehicle from there, brought it over there in Japan, deassembled it, reassembled it and voila, Toyota was created. And from Toyota, it was you know, brought to Toyota in the coming centuries. And that's how uh, we can also try to strive and become you know, market leaders. And now the Toyota concept of developing product is used by all automotive industry, be it from Germany as well, uh, because they are the hub of the, uh, you know, 50% of automa automobile industry. So when we look at the disruptive technology, why you should be interested in um, research? Because it's innovative. Uh, you should have interest in this. It's because the world is evolving. There are new challenges which are coming up on you know, daily basis, there are a lot of research opportunities. Uh, it is also giving a, you know, opportunity for creating higher education models, business opportunity, business creation, applying disruptive technology and venture creation. So disruptive technologies give rise to opportunities for entrepreneurs. That is uh, definitive. And uh, when we look at the thoughts of Peter Ducker, uh, successful entrepreneurs don't wait for innovative ideas to strike like a lightning bolt. They go out for looking at innovative opportunities, seven key areas, which are unexpected occurrences, incongruities, process needs, new market changes, demographic changes, and changes in perception. So entrepreneur is someone who is working towards understanding the technology and implementing it in the areas uh, which are being discussed upon. Uh, for example, if there is a market change or industry change, if there is a demographical change or the new knowledge which has been created. So that is the role of an entrepreneur. You need not be master or you need not be an innovator to start a business. You can always be you know, product and you can start up. And that's what a lot of businesses today are doing in terms of vaccination also. They are taking the copyrights or the IPRs of the you know, vaccine being created and trying to, uh, you know, make the product and sell it in the market. So obviously it comes at a cost, but then that's what the risk of an entrepreneur is all about. When we look at the working age of population comparison, as you can see, uh, in 2050, we'll have larger population in the, uh, you know, age group of uh, 60 to 70 and uh, environment. And uh, we're looking at owning up the skills of these people at the same time, creating ventures and a startup culture and ecosystem which can help us to strive in the right direction. And you can see the comparative analysis over here through this graph that we will be the maximum, I mean, like we'll have the maximum people in the age group of 60 to 70 by 2050. And uh, that's when we start getting older. So we need to identify what are the ways by which we are going to you know, channelize the resources and energy and thought processes to come up with new ideas and solutions which can help the ecosystem work better. Right now we are seeing 
Japan is having the oldest population in the world and they're expecting engineers and you know people from IT to come over there and work in their company and they're welcoming them with their open hands. So similar condition we'll see uh, by 2050, next 2025 20, odd years happening in India. So uh, we need to visualize as to what new opportunities will be lying ahead in front of us and work towards it and through research only we can come up with this new ideas. So when we look at the startup ecosystem, you know, uh, it is uh, said that nearly dollar 10 trillion economy GDP will be created by 2030. We are as of now at uh, somewhere around 4.45 uh, and we should be able to reach to 10 trillion dollar economy by next uh, nine odd years. And I guess definitely we are going to be able to achieve it uh, because the kind of research atmosphere we are having, the kind of number of PhDs which has gone up uh, you know, over the last uh, a few decades and the kind of uh, support from the ecosystem which we are getting from the government. I guess uh, everything in sync will help us to achieve this big. Uh, to sum it up, I should say, you know, Silicon Valley is not a location, it's a mindset. You know? And when we look at Powai, or uh, Powai Valley over here, or we can say Bangalore Valley in the south, you know, it's, it's only the mindset of the people who come together who are going to create this kind of an opportunity for the billion people and uh, try to solve their problems and create uh, new ventures which are going to help us to, you know, uh, spearhead to becoming the top three economies in the world. So, uh, you know, the references were from Innovation HBR, McKinsey and Innovators Alima and various other resources uh, from the I would like to thank again Shubha ma'am, Kamlesh Sandhikar sir, the students for being attentive. If you have any questions pertaining to technology, innovation, entrepreneurship or my presentation, I would be open for that. Thank you so much. Sir, thank you so much for nice presentation. Nicely explained the innovation and technology. If you have any question, unmute yourself and ask the question. Which type of innovation have more opportunity as well as the threat? That's a question by I Okay. So, uh, which type of innovation have more opportunity as well as the threat? So that's the disruptive one. Because it's from zero to one, uh, Alvin. Because, you know, when there are, so there are two types of uh, things which you can do as an entrepreneur. One, you can either go from zero to one. That is, there is nothing being, you know, uh, there is no technology or a business which is there in an XYZ innovative field. And now you are going to come up with a new model like when Uber started, you know, uh, or when SpaceX started. So colonizing Mars is a very vague term, you know, and not many people will be ready to invest in you or me if we go to an investor. You know, if I only start to post this and say, you know what, I have an idea to colonize Mars. They will ask me for the credentials. They'll ask me what kind of expertise or experience you have in doing uh, you know, what kind of uh, uh, technology you are going to work with. And I'll be, uh, you know, uh, surprised not to have any answers to that. Because that kind of an experience I don't have, or that kind of failures I've not seen, to have that confidence to do something like colonizing Mars. But Elon Musk does. So, innovation, when it is from zero to one, I should say, will have a lot of opportunity as well as the highest threat. Because not many people can easily believe on it. You know, even today people doubt it. Even today people doubt we ever kept our, you know, foot on moon. Not many people even today believe it. So, you know, that's the thing, you know, uh, about innovation uh, and innovative business models that not many people will be easily digested and not many people or investors will be ready to support initially. So, it will have the largest threats. Any other question? Dear participant, any other questions? Unmute yourself and ask the question directly. Dr. Sachin Bhadev. Yes, sir. Any question from you? Hello? Uh, sir, you need to unmute yourself. Sir, one more uh, question to you, sir. 
Yes, sir. Sir, as an entrepreneur, they are the ones who are taking lots of risk. So, uh, is there any uh, thing which uh, will help them to reduce or maxim uh, minimize, so not maximize, minimize the risk which they are taking? Yeah, for maximizing, there are many terms, <laughs> many things like pestle, you know, political, economical, social, technological, environmental, and legal aspects, which are always there to maximize your threats. But to minimize it, Definitely, Alvin, you need to uh, find mentors. Uh, you need to connect with the people from the industry. Uh, you know, always believe in healthy competition. So you can connect with the people who are working in your domain. For example, if you are planning to start a biotech company, can you connect with uh, someone of uh, the stature of Kiran Mazumda Shawma? And you can connect with her, gain some insights. You know, if you're prepared for the unseen things which are lying ahead, uh, it is always better to you know work around things and get uh, uh, into the right direction. So minimizing threats obviously also has to do with the business model which you are working on. Earlier, what used to happen is you you know had an idea, you used to take loan or get money, and then you used to create a product and you know go in the market and test whether it is a successful product or not. But today, what has happened is you have uh, lean business models uh, with lean campus startups as to. Uh, I can say with my organization, what we try to help with the startups is we make them go through this lean model canvassing of their business and try to understand how they can reduce this risk and mitigate it by identifying uh, and connecting with the customer, empathizing with them, trying to identify what are the challenges they actually you know, are, are facing and then coming up with the, uh, a prototype and then pitching it to the people, again going back to them, taking the feedback and then coming up with a product, uh, you know, which could be pitched to the investors, then they invest and then we scale up gradually. So it is not something like, you know, the previous models which were there where you have an idea and you just go and make it and then you test in the market. No, today has changed and evolved to a great extent. Today, you create a prototype first, go in between the people and the users and the personas who are going to use your product connect with them, try to identify their challenges, empathize with them, and then come back, make modifications in that prototype, and then make a solid product. You know, it, it takes time to build that, over six months to maybe one year also. So, the more you study, the more you research, the better you can mitigate your risk. I hope I've answered you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for addressing the question. Thank you. Yeah, I can take one more last question, then we can wind up, wind up this session. Anyone uh, else would like to ask any questions? If you have any questions, you can, you know, get in touch with me. I'll just share my link over here. You can always connect with me and share your uh, problems or discuss your ideas. I'd be happy to support you guys. So, thank you so much, Kamlesh Sanika, sir, for uh, you know, having me here. Shubda, ma'am, for giving this uh, opportunity. And uh, to all the students who have been listening patiently, uh, I wish you all the best for the national seminar and various other new avenues which lie ahead for all of you. Thank you so much.